Welcome to Closet Cosplay, the podcast where we help you create con-worthy cosplays on a closet budget. I'm LJ. And I'm Michelle. And talking about creating con-worthy cosplays on a closet budget, <laughs> we are going to actually tell you guys how we created our Celeste and Blathers look from this past episode on not a closet budget even, but from our actual closets with no purchases made. Yeah, it's true. It was it was legit closet cosplay. It's whatever we own. We did not purchase a single thing because who's actually able to go to stores at this point still? <laughs> Which means we had to get really creative on this one. Yes, we did. So LJ, tell me about your blathers first. I want to hear what you did. Also, I must say that a couple of our listeners were like, where did you get the bugs? So I need that question. Uh, <laughs> so I collect, just as a, as a brief aside, I'm a big fan of collecting uh, specimens under glass and wet specimens. So I get them from all sorts of places and they're all ethically, you know, humanely sourced or you, you died of natural causes and they're preserved and stuff like that. But I, I had a big horned beetle and I've got a snake boy. I've got all sorts. I've got like three, four bats at this point. I've got all sorts of stuff. I have a little what kind of spider was that? Um, that's a tarantula. Oh, that is, it looks that is, huge. That is a tarantula. Tarantulas are huge. I guess I've never seen one like that because that was that blew my mind. Oh yeah, tarantulas are real big, which is the fun. It's funny because that's a, what's in the game of you know knocking you out if you can't catch them in time. But that's why I was like, oh, this is perfect because I saw you, which we'll talk about here soon. You know, you used a little star prop, and that gave me the idea of like, oh, obviously I have bugs. Like. <laughs> So it was many so bugs. perfect. It was so perfect. Yeah. So, you know, we had discussed a little bit about this in the previous episode of like, we, we hadn't, we hadn't even looked at our closets yet and what we had, all we kind of knew was like, we're going to try to do Celeste and Blathers. We hadn't even hundred percent decided who was going to do what we were just going to try to figure it out. And uh, we ultimately decided that we were going to do, you were going to do Celeste because you were going to see what you came up with. And then I was going to try to do Blathers because I had thought Celeste was brown, and I talked about this last episode, and she's not. She's red, which you can't really tell at night, which is the only time that she shows up. So <laughs> I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. I, I, I can do this. I got I got plenty of brown. Um, and what I ended up using was, it was a co from a costume that I previously had. As I went as uh, schoolgirl Mothra, like from Godzilla. <laughs> so it was like, a human version of Mothra. So I had like these little butterfly wings, but she's brown or like a dark brown, blacky color. And I was like, oh, I'll just use the little skirt and the jacket that I've got from that. And that'll be that. And I had this idea. Oops. And now we've got it back. <laughs> All right. So yeah, okay. you were talking about Mothra. Yes. I was talking about my Mothra costume. So I had a brown school girl, school girl uniform. Actually, it, it came from Japan, which is uh, everything was in Japanese, which is kind of funny. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. And so it had like all these, it actually had the little red tie that I could appropriate for Isabel if I wanted to do Isabel. <laughs> oh, perfect. There <laughs> so you it's, go. Like, I had Mothra all these pieces. Piece. Yeah. I had all these pieces. And so, um, my big main thing for for blathers and you know we talk about like what's what's the one pinpoint that we get uh from a character and like for me he's got that little argyle tummy and so i was like i have to have argyle <laughs> and i got it in my head that i was like oh well i have these argyle tights and you know if i'm doing a girl version of blathers like that totally seems fair so I spent like an hour looking for these tights, by the way. She kept and texting me. She's like, these are nowhere. I give up. I was so mad. Like, yeah, the second I texted her and I was like, it, I was literally looking for an hour and I could not find them. It was and, wild. And I gave up and I was like, I texted her. I was like, I give up. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I'll figure it out. And then the second that I gave up, I looked through this one box that I have no memory of doing this, but apparently I made my Mothra outfit its own little bags and put everything in like individualized containers. And so I I organized myself so well that I completely forgot about it and made myself not know where things were. <laughs> Don't we always do that though. It's like, okay, yes. I'm putting this in a safe place so I won't forget where I put it. You completely it's purposeful. Forget it. I'm doing this so I'll be able to find it. And then it's like, you never see that item again. Oh yeah. I, so, you know, we talked about, and I think my advice to you even was like, stay flexible. And like, but I was having a hard time doing that. Like as far as like doing the closet cosplay, like stay flexible, 
or my advice to everybody was that. And I was like having such a hard time letting this go. I, I really did. And so I get these Argyle tights, which are going to be my nod to his Argyle little tummy. And I put them on and I'm just like, like, I don't think this looks right. I don't think it looks good. Like, sure, it technically reads, but I'm not feeling it. So I was like, but I know what I can totally do. So I took these tights and you can see in the picture, it looks like I've got a vest on. An Argyle. I thought vest. you did. <laughs> Those are just my tights that I have re- draped around my neck and tucked into my skirt. <laughs> like, <laughs> when you told me that, I was amazed at you. I could not believe that. <laughs> so it's like, Yes, you can get your way. <laughs> it may just not be the way you expected it to be. <laughs> so that was that was my my blathers. And I did you know, for my hair, and it's so funny because the picture that you had sent me is like you're wearing this wig that's like kind of full and it's got those like loose curls kind of in it, like wave. Love that wig. Yeah, I really like that wig. And I was like, oh, that's so great because like the way that I would plan, because I see blathers as a little bit, you know, he's always like, ah, like in creeped out and worries and frets and so like I have a hard time seeing him like not have like that fuzzy nutty professor kind of hair I loved the way you styled your hair I thought it was so perfect your expression it was just so so wonderful yeah that was my intent with it was it kind of give him a little bit of the the eccentric professor kind of look and so like the freak it, it, out he has when you bring him a bug yes so that was kind of my intent and I was glad that's like oh okay good we have kind of like matching hair styles which works because we're supposed to be siblings so like I liked that and um I had those big round glasses because you know Blathers has the big eyes and so it kind of helps mimic the idea of like big owl eyes. Where did you get the glasses at? So I just got those on Amazon. They were originally like sunglasses or something like oh. but I just popped the lenses out of them. And so I've used them for at least three or four cosplays. Like I used them for my fashionista cosplay. I've used them for this Blathers one. I used it for a Halloween costume, but I can't remember even who I was. I think we were supposed to be a Scooby Doo gang. But anyway, it's you can something as simple as that, you can use a million different ways. <laughs> I love so, like an item I get for a cosplay that I can use for multiple cosplays. Cause for me, I just don't like spending however much I'm spending on one cosplay to wear it once and never use the item again. I really like to be able to wear it out like in my life or be able to use it for another cosplay. And I think those are the best pieces when you can find something that works in multiple ways. Yeah, no, it really is. And what's interesting to me about doing this this closet cosplay, and I, and I don't actually do, despite the name of, of this podcast, I don't do a ton of le- just straight up closet cosplaying like I'll take a piece here and there but like I'll go look on the internet and get my heart set on something and order it and this time I couldn't do that because we were like here's our limit we're going to do this today (laughs) we have to get this done tonight tonight we have to put it together make it happen yeah and so like it really forced me to be creative which I think is a lot of fun and it really takes you know sometimes people get really wrapped up in well it has to be super accurate to the character mm-hmm. or something like that. And when you limit yourself to something of only what you've got, that's impossible. You're not going to be 100% accurate. So it gives you a lot more freedom and it forces you to, you know, have critical cosplay cosplay thinking and try to figure out items that you might not have and how to represent those. I didn't have an argyle vest, but I had argyle tights. <laughs> Well, and I honestly just loved the creativity you had to kind of put into it to say, okay, I want to show this thing. And then to say, okay, well, I can't show this thing. How do I, you know, give that feeling or how do I, you know, put that color in somewhere or make it work in a different way. And to me, that was so fun and such a fun challenge to say, I don't have all these pieces, but I do have this. How do I put it together to you know, seem like this character. And that was fun. Yeah, it was really fun. And and considering it's it's only, it's the only cosplay I have gotten to do in like months. (laughs) Right. But you did a really good job with yours too, because you did Celeste. So you should tell me about Celeste. So I I kind of was sad to not have blathers because when I first (laughs) started looking through my stuff, all I came up with, and I started in, like going through all my tights and stuff because I do have 
cute pattern tights and different color tights. I just love wintertime. So I have a ton of mm, tights yeah. and scarves and winter clothing, just generally a ton of that kind of stuff and yeah, less me too. summer stuff. So I said, how am I going to pull off Celeste? I feel like she's very <laughs> like red and pink and cutesy. And I thought to myself, oh, I have browns and neutrals <laughs> and more of that, you know? So I, I was going through my tights and I kept pulling out Oh, brown tights. These would be perfect. Oh, these tights. These would be perfect, you know. And then I did come across a pair of, I think they were purple colored tights is what color they were. And I thought, okay, I could make this work. This is in the realm of, you know, pink, red, purple, Mm -hmm. adjacent. I'll I'll do that. So I grabbed my purple tights. And along with that, I have a lot of like those high socks, you know, over the knee socks socks and those kinds of things. So. Mm -hmm. I started just pulling through those and I found, I think I got these last Christmas as a gift. It was a three pack of, you know, they're like these little boot socks, but they have a cute kind of knit pattern on them. Oh yeah. I like those. And you can't even hardly see them in the picture. I'll post another picture that maybe you can see them better in, but they were red, like red, red. And I said, Mm -hmm. okay, perfect. I'm going to use them. So I got purple tights, these red boot socks. And I have a pair of heels and I want to say I got them at Goodwill. It was either Goodwill or Bargain Hunt. It was some kind of thrift store. They're super cute. (laughs) I I noticed them like immediately. I was like, oh, yeah. And I don't even wear them normally, which is crazy because they are so cute. But they're brown and they have like a double strap across them. And what pat like what detailing would you call this? I don't really know what detailing it is. It's like wingtip, I guess. Yeah, it's a wingtip heel, but it's just a brown heel. And I thought I was originally doing blathers. So I had the idea in my head that I was like, I'm using these heels no matter what. So I was like, if they'd work for blathers, they'll work for Celeste. Yeah. So I put that was kind of what I started with was the base of it. I said, okay, I've got the brown heels, the red socks, the purple tight. And I thought, well, I have to work pink in somehow. Mm -hmm. She definitely. She has that same argyle pattern on her tummy where it's pink, red, I think, and white yeah. is mm-hmm. what her colors are. I and so. I thought to myself, I just recently purchased a couple midi skirts, like those longer skirts, because I wanted some cuter skirt options for work. And one of those skirts I purchased was a light pink pleated min- like midi skirt. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, that would work. But then when I put it on over the tights, I said, oh, well, it's covering up all the tights. And I kind of want this to be shorter. So I just took that midi skirt from my waist, pulled it all the way up to my (laughs) chest. And then it looked like a little mini skirt. And I said, oh, that's cute. I like that. Yeah, it was super cute, especially because like it kind of was a little longer in the back because of that, I think. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so it kind of like it gave you that mimic of her, like her little tail. Right. Because you have a little longer in the back. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking of, because um, one of the things I noticed even in the patterning on the shirt that you used, you could almost say that it's almost like a feather type pattern. It's kind of got that like broad brush stroke kind of look to it. Yes, and that worked out really well, too. Yeah. And the other thing, my friend who was taking the pictures of me that day, she kept saying the sleeve of that, you know, jacket thing was kind of bell bottom almost looking so it almost looked like a wing yeah i like yeah that was held really out okay. mm-hmm. and that actually is a it's a lightweight hoodie i would call it so it's not heavy but it has a hood on it and it has the like hoodie pocket in the front and a little okay. tie in the front too but what i did is i just took that and i tucked it under so it would look shorter and tied it with like a hair tie in the back so tied it up so it looked shorter and it would show more of the skirt because yeah. really if I wore it the way it was it would have covered up almost that whole skirt right and then, then that's the thing is like you you adjust it and it looks really good at the end and honestly I just thought that that was the way that it was supposed to look <laughs> right I liked it that way honestly I haven't worn that since I brought it home from Honduras so I don't know why I thought about you know digging in the back of my closet for that but when I saw it I said oh Oh, it's red and the brush stroke, like you said, the brush stroke look of it. And yeah, it it's kind of feather like I said, this is, this is going to work. I'm going to make this work with yeah, this skirt. It well, that was and one of the reasons so- I uh, I let on my jacket, I've got the cuffs pulled up and then the cuffs point outwards because I thought it might give it kind of like a little bit of a wing look or at least like yeah. 
be mimicry of that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, hey, sometimes you just uh, get things that people see in an outfit, like how my skirt was longer in the back that you don't even realize you're doing. So that's always fun. Yeah, it, it, it's funny like that. Um, but I know that you didn't really have trouble finding anything except your bow. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Okay, let me go for the bow. So I wanted the pink bow, right? She's got this huge pink bow in the back of her head. That was your and argyle thought, height. <laughs> you what? So that was your argyle tight. So you had to have yeah. the pink bow. <laughs> it, was the, it was the pink bow. I said, I've got to have some kind of pink bow in my hair. And I could, I did kind of fight over the fact if I was going to use my wig or my regular hair and how I was going to get the bow, if I was going to put it behind my head or like on the side, you know, I did think about mm-hmm. that. But my friend who was here, you know, helping me work on it and who took the pictures of me, she said she just grabbed a pink workout headband. I do yoga. So I have all these workout headbands just laying everywhere. And I just happen to have this pink one. And she just tied it in a quick little bow. And she said, will this work? And I thought, oh, my goodness, <laughs> I would have never done that. But yes, that will work. So yeah, I never would have been able to tell that that way. I just thought you had a pink bow. <laughs> like, oh, no, I do not have pink bows <laughs> like that laying around. So yeah, that's a that's a workout headband just tied into a bow. And what I did is I took bobby pins and I pinned it into that wig I wore. So it was just kind of pinned there. It didn't have a pin attached to it or anything like that. I just took a bobby pin and stuck it, you know, kind of on the wig, which was cool. And I mean, the thing with the hair tie on the back of my jacket, the hard thing about pictures is you kind of have to just make sure you angle yourself so you can't see that or tuck it under. Yeah. You know, and it's like at one point I had to, I, I got my friend, I said, tie this tighter because my waist doesn't look, you know, tiny enough. So it's got my waist <laughs> to look tinier when I tied that tighter. And yeah, the pink bow, I think, pulled it all together for me. When I put that in my hair, I love that. I also put like glitter eyeshadow on. You can't see it in the pictures at all. But I thought like, she's got to have glitter. She's got to have this little star. Oh, that would make, yeah, that would make total sense if she would have like the little glittery makeup. Yeah. And I thought that was cute. And I did like really kind of heavier blush because she's got these, you know, the pinky kind yeah, of blush. And I thought I'm going to do heavy blush. And then the other thing was my little star prop. So I wanted, I thought that I could find some kind of photo editing thing to put stars in the background. Mm-hmm. But when I didn't really find what I wanted, I just, my house, and I said, oh, well, we've got <laughs> star decor. Let me just grab one of these and stick it on a twig in my tree <laughs> and make it, you know, just a little reference, you know, a little peekaboo type thing. If people see it, they'll get it, you know. Yeah. And I have a, another set of pictures that I have a little red, you know, marquee star light thing Mm -hmm. that I also had that I just kind of set at the base of a tree so I took you know a ton of pictures because to me it's like you got to get your posing right so it's like if you take a ton then you'll get at least one good one you know oh yeah that's kind of the idea but that's really I think that's everything I used yeah I would would say um one thing I wanted to touch on too was it's interesting because you sent me your pictures first Right, because you were trying to figure out which one you were doing. I I was trying to see what I've got, and you sent me your pictures, and like I loved the way that you had done your hair, because the way that I kind of pictured having blathers was the whole frizzy hair stuff. Yeah, and uh, because he's got that little eccentric thing, and we both we both kind of had that similarity sibling look to us. It was it was really neat to see how the two pictures together looked, and I was so proud of us because we didn't you know we weren't sending each other's pictures until we were done with it so that was really neat that we didn't really communicate on that but we made it we had that same idea yeah no no it really worked out and it's so funny they like you had you had a photographer to help you I at first did not and apparently I do not know how to work my camera as well as I thought I did and I had to like wait until Vince was free so he could come help take pictures <laughs> and it was so much better when somebody is taking a oh picture my of you gosh it, is it so was better. so difficult so that is that is some advice to everybody out there if you are planning on taking pictures of yourself by yourself look up some advice and how to's and the way that your camera actually works because like it was it was rough trying to i couldn't figure out how to make mine wait longer than 10 seconds to take a picture and so I would like have to go 
click the button and then like run over to where I was sitting, try oh, to get in hard. position, try to that's fix my hard. hair again, pick up my bugs, have the right expression, make sure I'm tilting the right way in 10 seconds. Not possible. I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I tried. <laughs> I tried. And so it it's very hot and muggy down here right now. And so I sat in this full outfit for like a good 45 minutes waiting for Vince to come take, help me take pictures. Just dying of a heat stroke. <laughs> that was my thing. I was outside that day and I don't think I posted the picture. Oh, this is another aspect of my outfit that I'll post for this episode. I do have a red pea coat. I just happen to have a red pea coat that I own. And I do have a couple pictures of me with a red pea coat on top of the outfit and I'll make sure those get posted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, it I, looks really good and it, it does pull the outfit cute. together. And there are some of the red peacoat pictures I preferred even to the one that ended up getting posted. So yeah, I'm outside in Mississippi heat in a peacoat and like tights and <laughs> socks, just dying sweat running down my face thinking, oh my goodness, this has got to be, I've got to go inside and get yeah. all this off. I'm dying. So there's, there's another thing. Maybe <laughs> I would not say that. Yeah, make sure. And, you know, I typically think about that with everything else. I didn't think about it with closet cosplaying. Yeah. And I would say that those two characters are, you typically see them in like suits or like dresses or, you know, they're doing the big wings on them and stuff. And so you're, you're, you're going to be hot in those outfits. <laughs> I think these would be perfect outfits for us to wear to like a fall or winter yes. con. And I am so down to wear these to a fall or winter con. I would not wear this in the summertime. There is no oh, way. Oh, my gosh. Okay. If those Argyle tights are like super thick and I had them like around my neck and it was it was very hot. But right. oh, I was going to mention one thing, too, because you were talking about how you were looking for some like software because you were going to alter or you were going to change your uh or you're going to put little stars and moons. Yeah. And stuff like that. Do you so, have anything that could have worked for that? Well, I use Photoshop, so I could have just done that. But oh, <laughs> uh, speaking of the Photoshop, the green bow tie that I have in my picture is not a green bow tie. <laughs> it is a red oh, bow tie. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually, yeah. So I didn't even realize I owned a bow tie. I for completely forgot. Uh, I was going to use the cat's bow tie from her birthday. <laughs> it was the original plan. <laughs> And then change the color. Uh, but I forgot I had a bow tie from like a really old cosplay that was like, I don't even remember what the name of the character was. It was a group cosplay and all the girls had like those little bunny outfit bow tie things. And nice. But it was like red. And so I just went into Photoshop. You know, obviously this is not something that you would do if you were going to go out somewhere. But if you're just taking a picture, edit that edit that bad boy nothing's stopping you <laughs> <laughs> that is so true because that's what i thought about the star background i said i could very easily like somehow get some stars in this picture yeah some people frown on editing cosplay but i, I feel like in it's becoming more and more and i say frown on in terms of like um I'll, I'll just use this as an example so there's a facebook group that i'm on that has to deal with lore olympus of course which was i believe our very first episode that we talked about and people post their cosplays there all the time but people aren't necessarily cosplaying when they're posting these cosplay photos they're just digitally editing them so like they'll put on a wig or they'll put on like a certain kind of outfit, but they won't put on body paint or they won't, or the color of the wig might not be right. So instead what they do is they go into like Photoshop and they just paint their body in Photoshop or they paint their wig in Photoshop. And some people are like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. What body paint did you use? Right. Well, they didn't use a body paint. They used Photoshop. <laughs> that's why it looks so good. <laughs> I think it's so fun to get a good picture of cosplay. It though. Is. I think it's it a totally fun is. way to play as well. I think it might be a different way to cosplay is to, you know, figure out how you can, yeah, find an aspect of the character and then digitally, you know, play with a photograph to get the result you want. And yeah. I think that's fun too. Yeah, and you know, it's it's a newer thing that I'm noticing and I'm seeing it more and more and some people are a little bit confused by it and some people are kind of like, eh, about it. But I think it's really interesting. Like, I think it's know, neat to look at and to see what people do and what they pull off with it. I think it's yeah, really... it doesn't make them neat. any less creative because they're Absolutely. using... I mean, it obviously. Yeah, yeah, it so, takes a level of creativity to do that. Exactly, and skill. That, the Photoshop is not simple. <laughs> Trust me, I could not even begin to Photoshop anything. 
it's 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 not easy. So you know, if you're doing something and to make people believe that you have put body paint on, you're doing a good job. And I don't see anything anything wrong with it. And especially like if you've got if you've got a real low budget, that's the way to go. If you're just Absolutely. like posting in cosplay groups that you know don't meet up and it's all digital, why not? You're doing something creative. You're representing the character the way that you want to represent them. You're doing cosplay, digital or physical. That's cosplay. I think is I think cosplay a lot of the aspect of it is just have fun yep. with being a character you love or you enjoy and do it whatever way you want to. I think when people get so stressed out about cosplay and like lose their minds, it's like bring that joy back to it that like, why did you want to do this character in the first place? Why did you want to show this off? Did you want to be this character? Did you want to see yourself in this character? Like come back to your why, come back to the joy of it and don't let it become this oh, this is so hard, or why am I doing this? Or, oh, you know, we stress ourselves out so bad about, like, I'm not going to look as good as this person. It's just like, do it for you. Enjoy it. Have fun. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons we ask on our suggestion form, you know, what makes you want to cosplay this character? You're, it's not because you want to compare yourself to somebody else. It's not because you want to be, you know, 100% legitimate, no Photoshop or anything like that. It's it's because you like the character. It's because you think it would be fun to play, to look like a badass, or you think it would be fun to look like a beautiful elven, you know, princess. Like you just, the reasons, you have to remember your real reasons, like your why, like you said. Why are you here in the first place? Yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just for fun. Why do we do this podcast? Because it's fun. We enjoy it. Yep. It's, and especially since I don't get to hang out otherwise. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So and it's been a lot of fun. And I'm glad that we got to do this 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 challenge. It actually was a challenge. And I only gave up once. <laughs> and we pulled it off. We pulled it off. We I did think. it. That's right. We I'm proud it. of us. I'm always proud of us. <laughs> That's my Hey, favorite. you mentioned our uh, cosplay suggestion form. I feel like it's maybe been a minute since we've really talked about it. But where can you find our cosplay suggestion form? What's it used for? Why do we want you to fill it out? So, the cosplay suggestion form was the original reason that this podcast actually existed, because in the before times, when we could actually go to conventions, we could cosplay in real life. (laughs) There you go. And one of the things that uh, got us going was the fact that we were always trying to come up with easy, good, effective ways of making costumes. And we would have a number of people say, hey, wow, I can't believe you put this together from Amazon or Goodwill or anything like that. And honestly, we love doing that sort of thing. So we thought, why not do it for other people? And we've gotten to do a lot. We've gotten to do Blood Rain. We've gotten to do like a steampunk. We've gotten to do, you know, a an elven RP character. We've gotten to do everything across the gamut at this point. We've gotten to do fan characters. And we've had to kind of stall on it because nobody's been able to go to conventions. But hopefully... Things are slowly starting to, to, to wind back up. And so we'd like to start helping people out with their costumes again. So you can actually find the suggestion form, which is where you would go. You can find it in the show notes on any of the platforms that you're looking at. Uh, I, I believe they're on everything. Is that correct? They should be. If should not, be. you can follow the link to our anchor page and it is definitely there. Yeah, it's definitely on the anchor page. It's definitely on our Instagram. You know, it's definitely on our Facebook. But it's and just on our Google- Facebook. It's not maybe displayed obviously but if you hit the contact us button on our facebook page it sends you directly to the form yeah and we yeah and so basically what what that suggestion form is is it it's just a suggestion form where you can submit what cosplay you want us to put together next and it could be one that you personally want to wear or it could just be one you're curious about how how we'd pull it off and it's pretty fast you know it's just like a couple of questions really it's and, it, you know, you can tailor it to as specific as you want or as general as you want. Do you, you don't you have to give us a paragraph for each thing. I mean, you can give no. us a sentence. Yeah. And we don't need as much. But the more detail that you give us, that's that's on you. Right. Um, but we would love to start seeing some more suggestions um, now that things are starting to trickle back in and things are starting to reopen. And hopefully, I don't know when the next con that we'll be able to go to, but I am keeping an eye out for the next one that, that pops up. I well, hey, and think about this. It is June. So, I mean, Halloween's coming up. If you want us to do a Halloween costume oh, for yeah. you, we'll do it. Oh, yeah. And that's plenty of time for us to find some real good stuff, too. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So definitely hit us up on our suggestion form. If you've got any other ideas for shows or suggestions, again, we've been kind of doing 
more cosplay theory than we have been doing. If you've been enjoying those episodes, please let us know and we'll pepper those in with everything else. Because honestly, we just enjoy talking about those sorts of things. Whether it's putting together a costume or talking about the theory, we're down for it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think I think that's going to do it for us, unless you have anything else you would like to throw in. I think I'm good. Um, we will see you next time here on the podcast. Bye, everybody. Bye.